All right, so we got to um, do some multiplying rational expressions today. Um, so when we're multiplying rational expressions, this is example number one out of five examples. So this is monomials, right? These are not polynomials. These are, I mean, they are polynomials, but they're monomials, which means there's no pluses and no minuses. Anytime there's no, there's no pluses, no minuses in on the numerators or the denominators, that means we're dealing with monomials, right? And when I'm dealing with monomials, I'm going to go ahead and multiply across, right? So I'm going to get 3 times 10, which is 30. I'm going to get x to the 5th times x cubed, which is x to the 8th right? Y cubed times Y to the fourth is Y to the seventh. On the bottom, we get two times nine, which two times nine is 18. And then X cubed times X squared is X to the fifth. And Y to the seventh times Y to the fifth is Y to the 12th, right? So now we're going to just simplify the coefficients and simplify the variables. So 30 and 18, what do 30 and 18 both have in common? six right so i would take 30 divided by 6 18 divided by 6 and i would get 5 over 3 because you're simplifying that just like a fraction and then um i have x to the eighth on top and x to the fifth on the bottom so 8 minus 5 is going to give me 3 and then i have y to the seventh and then y to the twelfth on top that's going to give me 7 minus 12 is going to give me negative 5. But remember, to make that positive, I would bring it to the bottom. So y to the fifth. Ta-da! So now let's move on to the big guns, right? So when we start to have monomials and and uh, when we start to have binomials, then um, we do the problem a little bit differently because I need to see if there's anything that I can factor first. OK, I want to see if there's anything that I can factor first. So when I'm seeing if there's anything that I can factor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the 4x plus 20. That has a GCF. What is my GCF of 4x plus 20? You say 4? Good. Fantastic. So I would take that 4 out and I would get <clears throat> 4 parentheses x plus 5. Now look at the other fraction x plus 5 cannot be factored. I'm going to leave that alone. x squared minus 9. How can I factor x squared minus 9? Well, it's the difference of two squares. Good. So that's going to turn out to be x minus 3, x plus 3. So now what I look for is I look for what I can simplify or what I can reduce, right, as common factors. So I have an x minus 3 on top, an x minus 3 on the bottom. So those are going to go ahead and simplify out, right? I have an x plus 5 on top, x plus 5 on the bottom. Those are going to go ahead and simplify out. So I'm going, my answer is going to be whatever is left over. On the top, I don't have anything left over. Whenever I don't have anything left over, that's a 1. On the bottom, I have a 4, that pink 4, and then I have an orange x plus 3. So this is my answer. Um, at the end, if there's anything left over that you can multiply, you go ahead and you multiply it. And then so that becomes your final answer for x plus 12. 1 over 4x plus 12. So if you, this is it. Factor, simplify, rewrite your answer. Okay. Now, we always want to talk about the domain, right? So this is the same example. Um, let's go back to the other one, right? So the denominator was 4x plus 20 and then x squared uh, minus 9, right? So I would take those denominators and I would factor them. When I factor them, that's how I got 4 parentheses x plus 5 and then x minus 3 x plus 3. I set the denominator equal to 0. Forget about that 4 in the front because 4 cannot equal 0, right? So I would get x equals negative 5, x equals positive 3, x equals negative 3. So these are where my domain is undefined.
you put them in order from least to greatest. And that's example number two. Example number three, we are back to doing just monomials, right? When I have just monomials, there's no pluses, no minuses in the numerators or in the denominators, right? So um, I just multiply across. So x times x to the seventh times 20. That's x, 20x to the eighth. 15 times 2 is 30. x times x to the fourth is x to the fifth. Right, so I'm going to simplify 20 over 30. How can I simplify 20 over 30? Good, we divided by 10, right? 20 divided by 10 is 2. 30 divided by 10 is 3. And then I do uh, x over 8, x, x to the 8th, and x to the 5th. 8 over 5 is going to be um, 8 minus 5 is going to be 3. So x to the 3rd. Okay, so I take the denominator, which was 30x to the fifth, and I set it equal to zero. Divide by 30, divide by 30. Take the, the fifth root of x, x equals zero. What are you noticing about the monomials and their domain restrictions? The answer to this question is anytime you have a monomial as your denominator, the restriction of the domain is zero. So in the last video and this video, that happened for all of them. Anyway, example number four. Okay, so when we're doing, what do we want to do? I have pluses and minuses, right? So I have binomials and I have a trinomial now. So I need to factor. I need to see if there's anything I can factor. So looking at the blue part of the problem, the blue part of the problem, Do can I factor? Is there a GCF? Yes, there is a GCF. There is a GCF of 10. So I take that 10 out, right? And then on the bottom is x squared minus 6x plus 8. That's a trinomial. I need to find factors of 8 that add to give me negative 6. Good. x minus 4, x minus 2. Purple. It's good, we're gonna leave it alone. Over 5x plus 15, GCF. Good, five, so five parentheses x plus three. Now that I have factored everything, I wanna see if I can cancel anything out. So we have to simplify. x minus four over x minus four, swipe, get rid of it x plus 3, x plus 3, simplify it, get rid of it. What do I have left on the top? I have a blue 10. On the bottom, I have an orange 5, and I have a pink x minus 2. So remember, at the very end, once you simplify stuff out, then you multiply if possible. Ta-da! All right, so we have one more example. Oh, well, actually, no, we have to find the domain. Just kidding. So when we're finding the domain, look at the pink part. X squared minus 6x plus 8. We're going to take the factored version, which is x minus 4 and x minus 2. And then we're going to take the orange part, 5x plus 15. We're going to take the factored part, which is 5 parentheses x plus 3. So in that second row, we're taking the pink and we're taking the orange and we're setting that equal to 0. So these were all of the parts of the denominator. I set all of those equal to zero. X plus three equals zero, X minus four equals zero, X minus two equals zero. So X equals negative three, X equals two, X equals four. So these are the values in which my domain is undefined. Ta-da! Okay, last but not least, this is our last problem, number five, but it is the hardest problem. Okay, so basically, I have uh, trinomials, I have binomials, I have to factor this, okay? So we're looking at 2n squared plus n minus 1. 
we have to factor it. So when I factor it, I have to do all the side work because you can't figure it out in your head, right? And maybe you forgot how to factor because it's been a long time. So this is all the side work. Multiply A times C. Break it apart. What are the factors that add to give you one? Simplify, okay? That's the blue part, right? Then I'm going to look at N squared minus 9. I'm going to realize that N squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares. So when I factor it, I'm going to get X minus 3 and X plus 3. That's the pink part. Now we're going to move on to the purple part, right? So the purple part is 2N squared minus 18. I'm going to look for GCF, right? The GCF is 2. Then on the inside of the parentheses, I notice it's N squared minus 9. That is the difference of two squares. I just did that in the pink part, didn't I? So I have X minus 3, X plus 3 with a 2 in front. And then, last but not least, is the orange part. So that is just a regular find factors of 6 that add to give me 7. 1 times 6, 2 times 3. The one that's going to give me 7 is 1 and 6. So n plus 6 and n plus 1. Now that I have all of those factored forms of the problems, I'm going to go back to my problem. Right? This is my problem. We factored it. All those answers that I took from the other slide now are here. This is the factored form. So now that I have all this wonderful factoring, guess what? Swipe, swipe, n plus 1, n plus 1. Those are going to simplify out. n plus 3, um, n plus 3, that's going to simplify out n minus 3, n minus 3, that's going to simplify out. So I'm left with a 2, the purple 2, and the blue 2, n minus 1, over n plus 6. Multiply if possible. So 4, n minus 2, over n plus 6. Wow. Wow. Okay, so now the last thing that I need to do is to define the domain. I'm going to define the domain by using the factored version of the denominators because you always want to set the denominator equal to zero, right? So the pink and the orange part, I'm taking the pink and the orange part, the factored version of the pink and the orange part, and I'm setting it equal to zero. So n minus 3, n plus 3, n plus 1, n plus 6, setting all of those equal to zero. Yo, where is that last one? There it goes. <laughs> Ta-da! And that's it in a nutshell. Bye!